1947, psychologists Jerome Bruner and Cecile Goodman uh, published what was to become a classic in the history of psychology. What they did is they brought children into their lab and had them estimate the sizes of coins that were in front of them. Well, it turned out that the children tended to overestimate the sizes of coins than they were to overestimate the sizes of identically sized cardboard discs. Even more strikingly, it was the children from poorer families who were particularly likely to overestimate the sizes of the coins. To the investigators, this suggested that um, it was because the children uh, saw value, that they saw intrinsic value in these coins and that this, um, this seeing these coins as desirable objects caused them to see them as larger. In their conclusion, Bruner and Goodman wrote, only one point need be reiterated. For too long now, perception has been virtually the exclusive domain of the experimental psychologist with a capital E. If we are to reach an understanding of the way perception works in everyday life, we social psychologists will have to join uh, and, and students of personality will have to join with the experimental psychologist to re-explore this ancient field of perception whose laws for too long have been taken for granted. Now, these kinds of claims and this kind of call to arms and call to action was uh, ignited excitement across the field and launched what became known as the new look in perception, a movement throughout the 1940s, 1950s, and 1960s uh, of psychologists seeking to understand that the way we literally saw the world was shaped by how much we needed things and our beliefs about the world and our emotions and our knowledge and our motivations. Although the heyday of the new look and perception was in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, work along similar lines has continued to this day. <laughs> 